FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's March 12, 2019, and we're marching right along. What is going on here in the market? Well, what do you need to do to stay safe and not see your savings, your investments wiped out when the market inevitably collapses? All these questions will be answered and many more. First, as always, please email us. Uh, we love getting your getting your missives. I always, first thing in the morning, I'm at an undisclosed coffee shop in Northern Palm Beach County, downing that Java. I am still going to do the show from a Starbucks shortly, but uh, there's a new one about to open up here. It will have adequate electric for me to plug my equipment in. We're going to do this, I promise you. So email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. So the issue of savings, what do we do here? How do you do it? Well, we've got with us now a uh, financial expert, Eddie Gabor. He's been on here many times. New book out, The Common Sense Bull. So Eddie, as always, welcome to the show. So Common Sense Thank Bull, what is that about? So uh, the common sense bull, as the head title says, is really using some common sense approach that I've used for my 20 plus year career with our clients and have able to navigate successfully through all kinds of crazy markets we've seen in the last 20 years. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's this impossible task to be financially independent. And the point of this book is to make it available for people so that way it's written in a form that everyone can apply to their life no matter what stage of life they're in, no matter what their career path is. Because it really comes down to just some core principles that have been there forever that if you stick to, you'll be successful financially. And also in our book, we talk about risk management strategies. You know, volatility is here, it's here to stay. And most people do not know whether or not their risk management strategy they don't even know what it is. When I ask people that question, what your risk management strategy is, many times I look and I get this deer in headlights look, and it tells mm -hmm. me that, oh my gosh, they probably are not prepared for the next drop when and if it happens. So my hope and goal with this book is it's written in a way that will not only educate investors, but motivate them to take some course of action that will hopefully put them in a much better position than where they were prior to reading it. Yeah. Uh, well, there's no shortage of financial ignorance and financial, uh, just financial misconceptions, uh, false beliefs. Uh, what is false belief? It's false information appearing real uh, fear. So, how do you uh, how do you get this through to people? I mean, you've been working on this your whole life. Uh, it's got to be a little frustrating, isn't it? It is frustrating at times. Uh, you know, I think in today's world, I think some people want to try to find, you know, so how do you, how do you get rich quick? You know, it's kind of like they want instant gratification and they don't want to sacrifice a little bit today for a f secure future. And so when you meet someone like that and you try to drill in their head that it's about building a plan and building a strategy and more importantly, having someone that you can trust to hold you accountable and that over time with the right core principles and risk management strategy, you can attain a level of financial independence that you probably would have never been able to do without the right plan. But unfortunately, sometimes people come into it and they just want instant gratification. They want to find the next Apple and the next Google or the next Amazon. And, you know, frankly, they're probably better off just going to the casino. Mm -hmm. You think so, huh? Casino better than, uh, than, than the market? Well, at least it happens a lot faster and you go broke faster. So maybe you learned your lesson faster as well. <laughs> right? That's right. And, and again, I think, uh, the book kind of lays out what type of risk management strategies may be suitable for different types of investors out there. But more importantly, trying to concentrate on really building a plan with some goals and goal setting in regards to really truly what you want your retirement to look like. Because there's not one set answer for everyone because everyone's situation is different. 
And that's where a lot of misinformation comes out is, you know, I'll have someone uh, that wants us to interview them to see if they're a fit for our company. And they'll just ask me, how much money do I need to be retired? And, you know, I don't know anything about them. And there's not a one set answer. And that's what hopefully this book will get through to these folks. Yeah. So there's no one size fits all. So one of the things you mentioned is the uh, depressingly low savings rate that Americans have, especially when you compare them to Chinese and other other countries around the world. We're dramatically undersaved here. We are. And I know a lot of it is, unfortunately, it's the younger generation that is, you know, we've heard the saying, keeping up with the Joneses and credit has just become too easy. Credit card debt is increasing because everyone wants that instant gratification. They're more concerned with what society thinks their success is versus kind of being that millionaire next door that pays themselves first. They probably don't have the fanciest car or the nicest clothes, but guess Mm -hmm. what? When you look at their net worth statement, they're in a position of financial independence. And unfortunately, there's a lot of folks that are, they say they're living paycheck to paycheck, but they're probably spending, you know, several thousands of dollars a year at Starbucks, you know, and they're not mm-hmm. saving money in their 401k. So it's really trying to find that balance. And hopefully this book will help educate people because that's the other thing too, is I think you'll see that some of this stuff, people graduate high school and they've never even heard of an IRA or a stock. It's yeah. maybe not even taught to them at school or even discussed at home. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, uh, I totally uh, get what you mean. And uh, financial education really is at a premium. You know, Robert Kiyosaki talks about this a lot in his writings. And so what is the best way to educate individuals about the options available that you have and why you need to put off, uh, why you need to defer gratification to a later date, not go buy that new car, lease it, finance it, whatever, because it costs you so much and you don't even realize what it's costing because, hey, you're just paying it, uh, you know, you're just paying it monthly. You barely even notice it, right? You're exactly right. And how do you get that message out? You know, obviously, uh, my hope is, is that my book does this to a certain degree. But to your point, it needs to start in the schools. It needs to be discussed at home. And you have to educate in many various ways because people will learn in different ways as well, too. And just hopefully more and more people will grasp the idea that, hey, my grandparents are retired because they sacrificed a little bit today to have Mm -hmm. a brighter future and they have to change their mindset of having to buy everything that they need at, or they think they need at that (laughs) moment. It's almost become too easy. You know, you sit on your couch and you can buy something on Amazon and it's sitting on your front doorstep the next day. People don't even realize how much money is going out the door. They don't do cash flow statements. They don't do net worth statements. They have no idea what they're spending or what's coming in. They're running their household very poorly from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a little scary because, you know, you don't want to be an 85 year old greeter at Walmart or a cashier at a mini Mart. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I'm not putting it down, but it's just when you're 85 years old, you kind of want uh, something a little, you know, you want to take it easy if that's what you want to do because you love people and you don't like staying home by yourself, that's fine, but not out of economic necessity, right? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Egypt is on the verge once again becoming a world-renowned gold producer. The golden age is being rediscovered. For millennia, ancient Egyptian kingdoms prospered from unparalleled riches. Pharaohs built their empires and flaunted their abundant wealth that was made possible by the country's resource-rich gold deposits. Despite this rich history, modern Egypt remains one of the most underdeveloped gold mining countries in the world. Aton Resources is at the center of the modern Egyptian mining world, diligently working both as the only public expert exploration company in Egypt today and as the advocate for mining reform with the Egyptian government. 
However, those that arrive early like Aton will reap the best rewards. Aton's discovery of the legendary Lost Mountain of Gold at Rod Ruin and its current aggressive drilling program there could potentially reap those rewards. Aton Resources is focused on its 100% owned Abu Marawat concession in the Arabian Nubian Shield located 200 kilometers north of Sentiment Sakari's world-class gold mine. Aton possesses first mover advantage in the underfollowed jurisdiction of Egypt, which is currently undergoing mining reform. To stay on top of Aton's latest drill results and news, go to AtonResources.com. Aton trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the ticker AAN and on the OTC under the ticker ANLBF. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. That's right. You know, we tell people, unfortunately, I've learned so much from my clients over the last 20 years because a majority of my clients are retired. So I've seen firsthand what they have done to be financially independent. And our clients that are working, they're working because they want to, not because they have to. And again, the goal with this book is to share some of these and hopefully some younger folks will be interested in reading it to hopefully motivate them to be like our client base. You know, they've sacrificed and they live with within their means, and they've done the core principles it takes to be financially independent. But again, it's unfortunate. It's a younger generation that just doesn't seem to get it from a broad-based perspective. I'm sure there's some of them out there that are, so I don't want to just assume they're all that way. But the statistics don't lie that a majority of people are very short-sighted, and they're not thinking about their future. And if they don't, they're going to sorely regret it when they're later in age. Yes, yes. So, you know, uh, one, I remember a psychological test. It was called um, emotional EQ, emotional quotient, IQ's intelligence quotient. And what they did was to test where these people were going in life, how successful they would be. As kids, all they did was basically give them M&Ms and say, look, uh, you can eat all these M&Ms now, but if you only eat a few and save the rest for later, we have a special prize for you, a special reward. And the kids who are able to defer their immediate gratification were the ones who are generally going to be more successful in life. And maybe we need an investor test, Eddie, that shows that very same thing, because now we know this. We know how it works. You can really help people by explaining these concepts and showing them, hey, your personality type is going to lead you to problems later on. I mean, I wish it was done for me. I mean, I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong, but if I had followed my own advice earlier in life, I would be uh, way further ahead now. Not that I'd ever retire because it's just not in my wheelhouse. But uh, fortunately, my son and uh, my children get this much more than I ever did. And, you know, it's uh, it's really interesting. It is. And I agree. You know, I have two boys, uh, 12 years old and 10 years old. And for two years now, I've been educating them on stocks and the value of investing. So, you know, when they do their lemonade stand in the summertime and they make 10 bucks, we have that conversation of you can go to the store and spend that $10 or you can spend $5 and save $5 so that way down the road you can buy two or three of those toys that you were going to be able to buy today because of the value of sacrificing a little bit today. And so they understand it and they get it. And we talk about it at home. Uh, so my goal is is that my kids are in a better position than I am. And again, that's where this education comes in because it's, it's just not there. And the other thing too, as a human being, we know that sometimes we can make emotional decisions financially. And that's why having a coach or an advisor to protect you from yourself, I think allows you to get to a better position financially over the long haul. I know I've used coaches. I still use coaches because again, I'm good at what I do, but I'm still a human being. So it kind of helps me stay focused on myself and my family and help me achieve levels of success that I probably wouldn't without a trusted advisor. Yeah. Same here. Uh, Anything that you're learning outside of childhood, you need a coach. You need a private tutor, if you will, to get you that information, because it's not that it becomes harder to learn as you as you age, although there is some truth to that, it's rather that the ability to learn is is kind of ingrained 
and you need somebody who can work with you and get those concepts through your thick skull through your gray matter and it'll make a huge difference i mean i always liken it eddie i learned how to ski when i was 25 and there was no way i could do one of those group lessons where everybody all these little kids are like bouncing off the snow and barely falling down i got a private instructor and i learned how to ski and i was half decent at it i won't say i was a great skier but i was i, I was able to enjoy the sport and uh, ski with friends and that's what it was about so really you need to be doing the same thing when it comes to your economic well-being don't you you really do again i'm in the business i'm more than capable of managing my household's assets i do it for families every day but again i know as a human being if i have a coach that's going to hold me accountable i'm going to make sure that i hit the goals we set out and i'm going to spend time investing in myself and again i talk about that in the common sense bowl that some of the most successful people in the world have coaches in the business world in the sports world we all need someone to help push us and help hold us accountable and you know i learned that early on and was very surprised at how many people actually work with coaches and advisors people oh, you probably God, would have yeah. never even thought of oh for sure for sure and another thing that you can use is the uh, the mastermind group Okay, where you get a group of like-minded people together who have similar goals at similar points in your life, and you uh, you basically uh, get sit down together and figure out uh, where you're going, right? And it really works amazingly well. I have a mastermind group I've been part of for years, and it's been uh, highly effective. So it really is. And you said the key like-minded individuals. I mean, mm -hmm. there's going to be some people that try to drag others down. You need to be around people that want the same things that you want in life about trying to achieve a level of success that puts you in a position of strength and being surrounded by those types of people are very important. I had a mentor tell me years ago, try to be the dumbest one in the room. <laughs> so you can be a sponge and learn from them. Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It really makes a big difference and will really do things for you that you never, you never thought possible. You know, it's, it's amazing what, uh, what it can help, help you with, how it can help you. Um, you know, I'm shocked by it myself at times. Eddie, we want to get this book. Uh, where do you get it at? So you can go to the website, which is thecommonsensebull.com, or you can go right to Amazon and order it right on Amazon. All right. Or wherever fine books used to be sold. All right. So anyways, uh, what's your site, by the way? Uh, just tell us again. Thecommonsensebull.com. All right. And your other site, your main site, business site. Is keyadvisorsgroupllc.com. All right. So we'll have links as always in the show notes. Don't forget, sign up for our newsletter. We've got a webinar coming up uh, on the 19th of this month, the 19th of March at 9 p.m. Eastern time, talking about uh, gold royalties, uh, how you play them, how it takes the risk out of gold investment. You'll see a link on the site. We'll have it up there shortly. Eddie, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much. And email us, kl at kerrylutz.com with any questions or comments. We love getting them. Eddie, we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you so much. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.